pay. Number 14, we have the diagonal of a TV set. All right, let's draw that. We'll draw it and then we'll do the math on the other sheet. The diagonal is this thing. And this says it's 52 inches long. The length is 28 inches more than the height. So here's your length. Here's your height. And the length is the height plus 28. And what we're being asked to do is find the dimensions of the TV set. And what that means is find the height, find the length. So we're going to set this up since we have a right triangle here. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And as always, the only really important letter is C, that 52 has got to be C. And which one of these you let be A and which one of these you let be B is not that important. I always let the vertical side be A and the horizontal side be B, but you don't have to do it that way. So I'm gonna go over now here, uh, no, over to here. And this is problem number 14. Where we're going to have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we're going to have H squared times H plus 28 squared equals 52 squared. And let's go ahead and find out for sure what we don't know. Remember that when you have a binomial squared, you have to do it this way. See, I'm doing it this way because this way I know for sure what I have to go to my calculator for. I am, uh, I need 28 squared and I need 52 squared. Cool. So this is 784. Alright, so let's do this. 2h squared plus 56h plus 784 equals 2704. And now, I have a higher order equation, a quadratic equation. So, um, I'm going to, I have to set it equal to zero, so I'm going to subtract 2704 from both sides of the equation. And 
and you bet I'm going to use my calculator. Come on now, little bugger. There. All right, so we're going to do this. Seven eight seven eight four minus twenty seven zero four. <sighs> gives us negative 1920. Okay, so we'll have 2h squared plus 56h equals 0. Now, we make life much easier for ourselves if we notice that every number is an even number that means two divides it evenly so i'm going to pull out a 2 gcf without a letter as long as it hasn't got a letter i can divide it out letter being variable h squared plus 28 h minus half of that so again, I pull up my calculator and I divide that by two. Minus 960. Still not pretty, is it? Now divide out the two and divide out the two because you don't need it. If there were an H there, you would not divide it out. But there isn't, so you do. Now, this is what we are going to try to solve. H squared plus 28H minus 960 equals zero. And so we now do our little calculator trick. Where's the calculator? There, okay. We could speed up finding the factors of 960 by using our calculator. So go to Y equals, we're not gonna graph, negative 960 divided by X. Now, I'm going to show you another step. I haven't shown you until now because I thought that might be complicated enough for some of you, but there is a way to get the exact number. So I'm going to come down to Y2, use the down arrow key, and here I'm going to type X plus what's in Y1 negative 960 divided by x. What is that going to do for me? Don't graph it. Whatever you do, do not graph it. We're not graphing. Push second graph, and that will give you this table. Now, the trick to doing this is we want to find positive 28. And you do that in the Y2 column over here. So let me go back here so that those of you taking notes can copy this down. And now we'll do it again, second graph. All right, I'm going to come over here. Oh, I can't make it go down. To make it go down, you have to be in the X column, down or up. All right, I am looking over here, though. And actually, I think if I go up, yes, I get the positive numbers. And this has to be positive 28.
There it is, right there. Negative 20 times 48. Yes, and they add up to 28 and they multiply to negative 960. So negative 20 and 48. Is that wonderful? I think it's wonderful. Let me double check. Yes, indeed. My tummy is making embarrassing noises. I'm hungry. Um, OK, so yes, these are the numbers we want. Now we're going to solve that. 8 minus 20 equals 0. H plus 48 equals zero. So let's let's finish up here. H minus 20 equals zero. Add 20. Add 20. So H equals 20. We're talking about the height of the TV set. Now, H plus 48 equals zero. Minus 48, minus 48. Well, you can already see this answer will make no sense because we don't, we don't measure, that's an eight, believe it or not. We don't measure in negative increments, do we? In negative measure. So get, just, just don't worry about that one. We're gonna go with H equals 20. So let's go back to our drawing. Well, let's we'll do this here. All right. H is 20. The height is 20. And the length is H plus 28, which will be 20 plus 28 which yes, gives us the positive version of negative 48. So these are gonna be our two numbers. So the height is gonna be 20, and the length is going to be 48. So let's put them here. Not bad. Okay, these two are pulled. So either one of these might come up for you. So let us do this problem, which I think I said earlier, not today, but when we actually did this in homework, that this problem is in every college algebra book throughout history. One way or another, everybody does this problem. So let's get to it. An open box is made, in other words, it doesn't have a top, we're not doing anything with the top. An open box is made from a 30 centimeter by seven centimeter piece of tin. So there it is laying flat. 30 by 70. And folding up the edges. This is what you get when you fold up each of the edges after you cut a square out of each corner. Fold up the edges. Now the area of the base of the box is 1364, 1,300 
64 square centimeters. And what we need to do is find this length and this length. All right, well, this length right here If we let X be the length of the side of the square, that means all the sides of the square are X centimeters long. This length is gonna be what you get when you start with 30 and then you cut out X inches and you cut out another X inches. So that makes this side 30 minus 2x. Meanwhile, this side, the length, is what you get when you start with 70, but then you cut out this x and you cut out this x centimeters. So this side of the box is 70 minus 2 x. So right now those are your dimensions. 30 minus 2x minus 70 minus 2x. And together, when you multiply them together, you get 1364. Why multiply them? Because uh, length times width equals area when you're dealing with rectangles. So I'm going to copy this and take it over to our worksheet, but we're not finding that. I take it all back because I dared to read that. The length of the sides of the squares is how many centimeters? We are only finding X. We don't have to worry about the length and the width of the box. We're just finding X. That's going to make it shorter. forgot to look and see what problem number that is. That's 15, duh. Number 15. All right, so 30 minus 2x times 70 minus 2x equals 1364. Now we can make life much, much easier on ourselves by taking out a common factor first. Because, I mean, then we won't have to multiply 30 times 70, for goodness sake. But then again, it is the more straightforward way to do it. Um, maybe we'll just do it that way. Let's just do it that way. Then we'll take the common factor out later. Okay, so um, we are going to multiply 30 times 70, yuck, 30 times minus 2x, negative 2x times 70, negative 2x times negative 2x, or if you prefer, minus 2x times minus 2x. So 30 times 70 is 2100. Let me make this bigger. Thirty times minus two x is minus sixty x. 
and negative or minus 2x times 70 is minus 140x and minus 2x times minus 2x is plus 4x squared and that equals 1364. So let's turn this around the other way. Ah, uh, this is going to be minus 200x plus 2100 equals 1364. Okay, we're going to have a common factor of 4 because 4 goes into 4, 4 goes into negative 200. I'm pretty sure it goes in there, but I'm not sure how many times. So, calculator, we need you. All right, 2100 divided by 4 is 525. Okay. So this is 4 times 525. This is uh, 50 times 4. And this is 4 times x squared. So I pull out the 4. Yes, I should have subtracted 1364 first, but I didn't, and that's life. Um, okay, so 1364 divided by 4. Please go evenly, please. Yes. Okay, I divide both sides by 4. I get 341 over here. I just don't want to forget it. So we'll have x squared minus 50x plus 525 equals 341. And then principle of zeros we subtract 341 from both sides of this equation, which gives us a zero on the right, and on the left we'll have x squared minus 50x, okay, 525 minus 341. is 184. All right, let's do our little calculator deal again. And both operating systems will do this. So clear, clear. 184 divided by x, it's positive. That's why it's positive 184. And then down here in y2, x plus 184 divided by x, whatever you put up here in y1. Now, I'm not going to graph it because I just don't care. 
second graph that I care about. Now, what I want is to find negative 50. And I notice the numbers are getting bigger in the negative direction. This way. So let's see if we find negative 50. Hold your breath. I didn't. Ha ha ha. There it is. I lied. I was sure I must have made a mistake. Um, negative 46 at times negative 4. Okay, is positive 184. And they add up to negative 50. Woo! Let me write down what they are. Negative 46 and negative 4. So we're going to have x minus 46 equals 0, and x minus 4 equals 0. So I will add 46 to both sides, and I will add 4 to both sides. Don't do that, Barbara. It's too easy to get mixed up. So I'll have x equals 46, and x equals positive 4. And what I want is x. Gee, I wonder what it could be. Considering that the original piece of 10, The original piece of 10, let's go back, is only 30 centimeters wide. If X were 46, and that's just one X is 46, that would be longer than that. 46 would make no sense at all. So we throw out 46 and we accept the four and yes, the length of the sides of the square is four centimeters long, which makes much more sense. From there, we could easily find the length and the width if we had been asked, but we were not asked. Now, we've gone over and I intend to go on and answer all the problems, okay? So you can leave or you can stay. Um, we don't really have that many left. Considering I think we did all. The rational function problems in my Saturday class. Aha, not this one. Analyze the rational function. Find the vertical asymptote domain and X and Y intercepts. Okay. Okay. Well, let's factor it first. All right, now, here we go. If I set X plus three equal to zero, which of course is what I don't wanna have happen, I find out what I probably can tell from the very beginning, just by looking at it, is that if X equals negative three, the denominator will equal zero which will make the entire function undefined. So we have to take negative three out of the domain. Nonetheless, 
this is the equation of the vertical asymptote. So X equals negative three. Now this says choose the correct domain. I always put domain first, but they put vertical asymptote first. Here's our domain. X cannot be allowed to equal negative three. So that means on the number line, on, on the x-axis, negative three, let's say it's located there, has to be actually eliminated from the x-axis. So you now have a hole in your x-axis. It's a terrible thing. So your domain is going to be all the numbers to the left of negative three and all the numbers to the right of negative three, but not negative three. And that matches up with this because your U goes in where all of your numbers are taken out off the X axis. So D is going to be our domain. Now, to find the x-intercepts, they give you one of them, but not the other. To find the x-intercepts, you set the numerator equal to zero and solve for x. So, if we take the numerator and set it equal to zero, I didn't need those. And x minus five equals zero. What do we get? We get x equals three, which is where this one came from, and x equals five by adding five to both sides. So x equals five, your x-intercept is going to be five comma zero. The x-intercept is a point and points on the whiteboard have two numbers associated with them, an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. Now to find the Y intercept, you take the entire function. To find the Y intercept, you take F of X, equals x squared minus 8x plus 15 over x plus 3. And you set all of the zero x's equal to 0. So that's f of 0 equals 0 squared minus 8 times 0 plus 15 over zero plus three, that'll be 15 over three, which is five. Now that's y equals five, okay? Not x equals five, it's y equals five. So our y-intercept, remember you've got an x and a y coordinate, you let x equal zero, all the x's equal zero, and you calculated five for the y. And that's the way you answer these questions.
OK, now nobody likes these, but we're going to do it anyway just to keep you in shape. All right, you got to you got to keep your difference quotient muscles in shape for the final exam. So you've got f of x. Find f of x plus h. All right, well, there you go. <laughs> OK, now we're going to find F of X plus H. Minus F of X. So that will be 4 X plus 4 H. Parentheses. Minus 5 minus parentheses 4x minus 5. So you'll have 4x plus, I don't have to write so small, 4x plus 4h minus 5 minus 4x minus times minus 5 is plus 5. Now you combine your like terms, 4x minus 4x is 0, negative 5 plus 5 is 0, and so you're left with 4h. So that finally, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Well, this, this is what 4x minus, uh, f of x plus h minus f of x equaled. So this is going to be 4h over h, which is 4, which is correct. Since this is just another way of writing the slope, you should know automatically on this one, this is like a gimme problem. That's the slope of the line, so of course you would answer four. I have to turn that off. That was an accident. All right, now something's a little more difficult and I think we have room for it here, but I'm not sure. So we'll see. Nah, don't take chances. Let's move this to the scratch paper. Problem 22. So we are going to find the difference quotient so f of x plus h will equal x plus h squared minus 8, which is x plus h times x plus h 
minus 8, which is x squared plus hx plus hx plus h squared minus 8, which is x squared plus 2hx plus h squared minus 8. So that's what f of x uh, plus h, this, this part of it, equals. So now we're going to find f of x plus h minus f of x, and that's the numerator. So we will have x squared plus 2hx plus h squared minus 8 minus x squared minus 8. Which will equal, let me scroll up so everybody can see x squared plus 2hx plus h squared minus 8 minus minus times x squared is minus x squared and minus times minus 8 is plus 8 and again combine like terms combine like terms so that you're left with 2hx plus h squared. So the last step, f of x plus h minus f of x over h We know what the top equals, because we just found it. It equals what I wrote over here, 2hx plus h squared. And I divide by h and divide by h, you divide each term separately by h. So, oh, my knee. I cancel an h, I cancel an h, and that's going to leave me with 2x plus h. And that is our difference quotient. Oh, and another one. What have I done? Well, let us for the sake of those who absolutely cannot stand any more. Um, let's do a fog problem. Now here you've got one done for you. So let's do this one. First, we're going to find f of g of x, and then we're going to find g of f of x. And then we're going to look at their domains. These are both polynomials. The domain of this is negative infinity to infinity. The domain of this is negative infinity to infinity. Why? Because all polynomials have that domain. 
one of the reasons we love polynomials. One of the reasons. All right, x squared minus 21 is what f of x is. minus 21. So, f of g of x and that's what f circle g fog x, that's what that is. f of g of x, that means you put g of x in for every x. Okay, so I have to find out what g of x is, right? 4x minus 7. So this is going to be 16x squared minus 56x plus 49 minus 21, 9 minus 1 is 8, and 4 minus 2 is 2. And don't give in to the temptation to factor it, that's not what we're doing here. So that is a wonderful answer. 16x squared minus 56x plus 28. Really? That's amazing. All right. All right, now, usually one is more difficult than the other. We're going to find now, let me draw a line just to keep them separate. Now we're going to do G of F of X equals G of F of X. All right, and since G of X is 4X minus 7, this will be 4 times F of X. but in G. Oh yeah, that's minus seven. That's what G is, four X minus seven, okay. Now, F of X is X squared minus 21, minus seven. So we'll have four X squared minus 84, minus seven, which will be four X squared. Ah, 91 minus 91. Both of these, look at these, 
16x squared minus 56x plus 28, 4x squared minus 91. Both of these are polynomial, therefore they both have the same domain, which is negative infinity to positive infinity. So the domains will be negative infinity to infinity, negative infinity to infinity. Now let's see if this has already been done. Doesn't look like it. When you've got a number in there, it's so much easier. If we're going to find fog, f of g of negative 5, then that's going to be f of g of negative 5. So we need to go here to g of x and find out what g of negative 5 is. So, I put negative 5 cubed in there, and I get negative 125. So, that means I'm going to have f of negative 125. So now we put this in for the X's in F. 3X plus 1. Perfect for a calculator. Three times negative 125. Usually I put negative numbers in parentheses, but I'm just being lazy. Plus one. It's negative 374. Oh dear. I am going to have to go over to my help times. and finish this there. So let's end this, and if you want to follow me over there, uh, probably there are going to be people over there, but we can do this, negative 374. I will end this now, and work on it of for the rest of the day, and as soon as I get it finished, I will upload it. To where? To week eight, because it's week eight. All right, I will see you over at my help times. I gotta go.